Hi, this is Teacher Chakravarti, father of Sia Aditya. Sia Aditya joined the Fiji uh, in the 8th standard as a classroom program. Initially when he started, he was a little bit nervous, I would rather say, because he used to see the students performing very well in the class. Then uh, his teachers over the, in the Fiji encouraged him to learn more and then practice more by which he can also improve. So that gave him a confidence and when, when he wrote the uh, Big Bang test in 9th standard, he was able to do well and then he was able to from there on he went one scale up and up and up and now he is he is here and for us uh, achievements i would like to credit the fiji for all the encouragement that they have given him and also the guidance which they have provided all along which helped him to excel in his studies and also in the pandemic uh, they helped him not to lose a focus and kept him busy with all the necessary exercises and then practice test and so on and so forth by which he was able to uh, attend the exams more with more confidence and he had the more rigor and he worked hard for that as well so that he can achieve in his studies thank you இணையத்தில் இணைந்திருக்கும் இந்து தமிழ் திசை இணைய நண்பர்களே மாணவ மாணவிகளே இன்பிரோ வெபினார் சீரீஸ் ப்ராட்டியூ பை பிட்ஜி குரேட்டட் பை நேஷனல் டிசைன் அண்ட் ரிசர்ச் போரம் நான்காம் வாரம் பத்தாம் நிகழ்வு திரும்பி பார்க்கும் பொழுது நேற்று தொடங்கிய மாதிரி இருக்கிறது வெள்ளிக்கிழமை வந்துவிட்டது நான்காம் வாரம் வெள்ளிக்கிழமை முதல் வெள்ளிக்கிழமையில் வந்து டாக்டர் மைல்சாம் அண்ணாதுரை சார் இனாகிரேட் பண்ணிட்டு போனாரு இந்த ஞாயிற்றுக்கிழமை அவரு மேலடிக்ஷன் வரப்போறாரு அவருடன் பணியாற்றிக் கொண்டிருக்கும் ஆஹ் இந்தியாவில் திரு டெல்லி பாபு அவர்கள் இதை என்டையரா கியூரேட் பண்ணிட்டு எல்லாம் பேசினதுக்கு அப்புறம் நான் அவருக்கு முன்னாடி பேசிக்கிறேன் நாளைக்கு வர இருக்கிறார் ஆகவே இணையத்தில் இணைந்திருக்கும் அத்தனை மாணவ மாணவிகள் எங்களுடன் ஆயிரத்துக்கும் மேற யூடியூப் வாசகர்கள் யூடியூப் வியூவர்ஸ் வந்து இதை பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் மறுக்க மறுக்க திருப்பி திருப்பி பார்த்துட்டு இருக்காங்க இன்ஃபேக்ட் ரெண்டு மூணு ஸ்கூல்ல இருந்து எங்க கிட்ட வந்து இந்த யூடியூப் லிங்க்ஸ் எல்லாம் கொடுங்க எங்க மாணவ மாணவிகளுக்கு எங்களோட வெப்சைட்ல போடணும்னு கேட்டிருக்காங்க ஸோ மிக்க மிக்க நன்றி பிட்ஜியும் என்டிஆர்எஃப்பும் இணைந்து இந்த நிகழ்வை ஒருங்கிணைத்துக் கொண்டிருக்கிறீர்கள் இதை நாங்கள் படைப்பதில் எங்களுக்கு பெருமிதம் இருக்கிறது ஆகவே நான்காம் வாரம் பத்தாம் நிகழ்வுக்குள் நேரடியாக செல் சென்றுள்ளலாம் அதற்கு முன்பதாக குறிப்புகள் தயவு செய்து சாட் பண்ணாதீங்க 
குட் ஈவினிங் சொல்ல வேண்டாம் மாலை வணக்கங்கள் எல்லாருக்கும் தெரியும் அதனால மயில்சாமி அண்ணாதுரை பத்மஸ்ரீ மயில்சாமி அண்ணாதுரை சார் சொன்ன மாதிரி நோட் புக் எடுத்துக்கிட்டீங்களா பென் பென்சில் பக்கத்துல வச்சுக்கிட்டீங்களா குறிப்புகளை எடுக்க வேண்டும் நீங்க குறிப்புகள் எடுத்து சந்தேகங்கள் வரும் பொழுதுதான் வல்லுநர்கள் ஆளுமை கிட்ட நீங்க கேள்விகளை ஆணித்தனமாக கேட்கலாம் உங்கள் கேள்விகள் பலருக்கு விடை தரும் ஆகவே எடுத்துக்கோங்க திறனா கேள்வி கேட்கக்கூடிய இரண்டு மாணவர்களுக்கு பரிசு வந்து சேரும் இந்த இன்றைக்கு இந்த வருஷம் இந்த வாட்டி என்ன பண்ணிருக்கோம் புதுமையா அப்படின்னா இந்த ஒரு ஒன்பது நிகழ்ச்சியில நீங்க எல்லாம் பங்கேற்று இருக்கீங்க நிறைய பேர் பார்த்துருக்கீங்க இப்ப நீங்க பண்ண வேண்டியதெல்லாம் என்னன்னா ஒவ்வொருத்தருக்கும் இன்னைக்கு ஒரு லிங்க் அனுப்பிச்சிருக்கோம் ரெஃபரல் லிங்க் அப்படின்ட்டு உங்களோட கிளாஸ்மெட்ஸ் எவ்வளவு பேருக்கு நீங்க ரெஃபர் பண்ண முடியுமோ அவ்வளவு பேருக்கு ரெஃபர் பண்ணீங்கன்னா நாளைக்கும் நாளாண்டைக்கும் நடக்கக்கூடிய ரெண்டு வெபினார்ல ரெண்டு ஆளுமைகள் வரப்போறாங்க ஒண்ணு உங்களுக்கு எல்லாம் அறிஞ்ச ரெண்டு பேரும் உங்களுக்கு அறிஞ்சவர்கள் தான் திரு வி டெல்லி பாபு அண்ட் டாக்டர் பத்மஸ்ரீ மயில்சாமி அண்ணாதுரை சார் சோ இந்த ரெண்டு பேரோட பேச்சையும் உங்களுக்கு உங்களுக்கும் கேட்கணும் உங்க ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸுக்கும் கேட்கணுன்றதுனால பார்க்கணுன்றதுனாலையும் நீங்க அந்த ரெஃபரல்ல வந்து எங்களுக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொடுத்தீங்கன்னா அவங்களுக்கு எல்லாத்துக்கும் அனுப்பிச்சலாம் தேங்க்ஸ் டு த பீப்புள் ஹூ ஹவ் ரெஃபர் டுடே இன்னைக்கு மட்டும் கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு முந்நூறு ரெஃபரல் எங்களுக்கு வந்திருக்கு முந்நூறு பேரும் முந்நூறு பேருக்கும் நாங்கள் இன்வைட் அனுப்பிச்சிருக்கோம் ஆகவே இதை பார்த்து கொண்டிருக்கும் அத்தனை பேரும் சில பேர் உங்களோட இமெயில தப்பா அனுப்பிச்சதுனால அந்த இமெயில் லிங்க்ஸ் உங்களுக்கு நாங்கள் அனுப்ப முடிய மாட்டேன் தயவு செய்து ரெஜிஸ்டர் பண்ணும்போது கரெக்டான இமெயில கொடுங்க இது மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள் உங்களை நேரடியாக வந்து சேரும் என்று சொல்லி இன்னைக்கு பத்தாவது நாள் நான்காம் வாரம் இன்றைய நம்ம விருந்தினர் ஆளுமை ஈஸ்ட்ல இருந்து வெஸ்டுக்கு போவாங்க இவர் வெஸ்ட்ல அதாவது இந்தியாவின் கடைக்கோடி திருவாண்டத்துல பிறந்து வெஸ்ட் கோஸ்ட்ல இருந்து இப்ப பணிபுரிவது வந்து ஈஸ்ட் கோஸ்ட் வைசாக்ல ட்ரிவாண்ட்ரம் டு வைசாக் இவர் ஒரு கேந்திரிய வித்யாவில் கேந்திரிய வித்யாலயால வந்து இவரோட ஸ்கூலிங்க முடிச்சுட்டு ட்ரிவாண்ட்ரம் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ்ல அவரோட எம்பிபிஎஸ் முடிச்சு அங்கே எம்எஸ்ஓ ஒரு இடத்துல படிச்சு எம்சிஹெச் போஸ்ட் டாக்டரல் ஃபெலோஷிப் இன் இசிஎம்ஓ அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க டெக்மோ அப்படின்னு சொல்லக்கூடியதுல வல்லமை இவருக்கு ஃபெலோஷிப் கிடைச்சிருக்கு இப்போது தற்போது இவர் வந்து கீதம் கீதம் யூனிவர்சிட்டி விசாகப்பட்டினம்ல வந்து ப்ரோக்ராம் ஹி இஸ் தி சீஃப் டிவிஷன் ஆஃப் சிடிவிஎஸ் அண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் கோஆர்டினேட்டர் ஃபார் டிஏ டிஏஹெச் அண்ட் எம்சி எஸ் அதாவது மருத்துவம் சார்ந்த இவ்வளவு ஒரு வல்லுமை வந்து நம்மளுக்கு கிடைக்கிறதே ஒரு அரிது அதுவும் அவர்களோட நேரத்தை நம்மளுக்காக கொண்டு வந்து என்டிஆர் வந்து கோஆர்டினேட் பண்ணி நம்மளுக்கு கொடுத்துருக்கிறது மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு வரப்பிரசாதம் இவரோட துணைவியார் ஒரு கைனகாலஜிஸ்ட் இவரோட மகள் இப்போது தற்போது கீர்த்தம் யூனிவர்சிட்டில மருத்துவம் படித்துக் கொண்டிருக்கிறார் இவர் முழுக்க முழுக்க இவரோட கம்ப்ளீட் ஏன்னா இவர்கிட்ட இருக்கக்கூடிய ஸ்லைட்ஸ்ல இருக்கக்கூடிய விஷயங்கள் அத்த விருந்தினரிக்கலாம் west coast to east coast of india the online platform is yours we from the hindu tamil fitji and ndr are happy to welcome you for this wonderful session where the students are all from 8th standard to 12th standard viewing this along with the parents thanks to covid that this is happening sir otherwise parent and student cannot sit in the drawing room and see this people are also hooked on their facebooks and youtube this is going on live so all the very best kalam ungaludhu sir inda chorpulave paarkum ende anjana kulagaikalkum ulagilulla avargalkum anjana pergalkum vaalthengal all children and their parents who are watching this program by big namaste to all of you 
can we have uh, the slides yeah this is what i made a small attempt in tamil greetings to all my dear children and their loving parents around the globe who are watching this lecture I am trying to focus on three things. One is uh, research opportunities in AIMS, whether we can redirect and reorient our research so that every single child of this country becomes a researcher. And I will uh, try to highlight on what we are doing in Geetham and uh, some story behind the total artificial heart. Uh, this is my small journey and which he has already highlighted. I started in Trivandrum Medical College doing my MBBS and MS there. And I was fortunate enough to be with Professor Venugopal in the India Institute of Medical Sciences completing my MCH. I was the country's first postdoctoral fellow in Sri Chitra, where I got an exposure to oxygenator design trials. And then I had a higher training in Mayo and Boston and my artificial heart journey with the University of Utah. Uh, now a member of most cardiac associations around the globe. I started my journey in Satisai Institute of Higher Medical Sciences in Puttaparthi under the blessings of Satisai Baba. And from there, I reached Ames, from there to Chitra, from Chitra to some hospitals outside the country. And then I was uh, successful in establishing uh, one of the major private hospitals and medical colleges in the south. And uh, a major journey which is now uh, continuing through Geetham. In Geetham, I am in Geetham Institute of Medical Science and Research. Can you show me the next slide? Please? Where I am working as the professor of uh, cardiac surgery and I am uh, spearheading a program on uh, uh, total artificial heart. Can you see that? That is the medical college in Geetham. No, I want the previous slide. The medical college in Geetham and uh, the hospital there. And you can see all the doctors being uh, encouraged by the defense forces in their fight against Corona. You can see all the doctors there. So we have been facing a major battle against Corona as an individual, as a citizen, as a global participant. And all of us has been uh, in this journey so far and uh, magnanimous enough to help the entire global community. Let us take a single minute prayer to uh, the lives lost during this great pandemic across the globe. Just for a second, we'll have a silent prayer and then we'll go ahead with the discussions. Okay, next slide, please. See, most of you would have finished engineering or must be on the verge of joining an engineering college or a medical college uh, in Ames or in one of the major medical colleges or uh, picking up one of the scientific specialities. But artificial intelligence is making a huge breakthrough into medical science. So when you go to the hospital, your doctor may look like that. Can you see there? Yeah. And uh, there is a program called RISE, which is... Uh, 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 raise in artificial intelligence for social empowerment being conducted by government of India right now. So I was in that meeting in the morning and today it was Chennai's turn, Tamil Nadu. They were telling that, you know, the artificial intelligence project in Tenkashi was employing school students in that, you know, it's very, very heartening to know that this is exactly the content of my speech today, that research should go down to school students should go down to villages, schools and universities should be the hub of research. And I really appreciate the government of Tamil Nadu for having joined the RISE meeting today and uh, told uh, their commitment to artificial intelligence in social empowerment. Next slide, please. Yeah, here again, not only for diagnosis, even for treatment, you may have artificial intelligence coming up in a big way. Okay, we'll go ahead to the next one. I think as kids, you would have enjoyed these two slides. And this is the country's premier uh, institute as far as the medical research and medical treatment is concerned. And in a global platform also, it would stand within the first 10. And we have uh, the maximum number of research papers and outputs coming in the country from this institute. And moreover, even in artificial intelligence, India has come up to third level as far as startups and uh, uh, other publications are concerned. Now I'll show you what are the thrust areas in uh, uh, this uh, research in AIMS. Okay. Yeah. 
these are the mission objectives it's not only creation of knowledge when knowledge comes the quality of teaching just goes higher 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 and higher and we have to create a national endure to cultivate what is called as a scientific temperament that is what is needed and i'll just highlight the thrust areas uh, as far as aims is concerned so it includes genetics uh, neurology and you know the diseases which are affecting a lot of people here today like leprosy tuberculosis uh, diarrheal diseases uh, hepatitis uh, fluorosis iron deficiency in all these areas aims has left a big stamp because uh, even for diarrheal diseases the algorithm which who follows is from aims and uh, the role of zinc deficiency in diarrheal diseases and rotavirus in diarrheal diseases can you go to the next slide please you can see that you know the thrust is basically on what we need as a nation so that is what you know the government also has been emphasizing is go going vocal for local see this pcr test which is developed in aims helps to diagnose tb very quickly very very fast and this is especially useful for extra pulmonary tuberculosis in leprosy you can see they're trying a vaccine interferon use of dna technology and development of tests you know even for life threatening reactions next slide please yeah you can have uh, you know even malaria the strains can be diagnosed for hiv it is one of the major centers and it has got an indigenous testing kit also developed and for liver diseases and if you look into aids again uh, uh, this is one of uh, the foremost countries for uh, as a reference center and uh, you also have uh, plague you know we are the world's first country to have developed a pcr formalin fixed uh, uh, material or testing for a plague and uh, you know even the genetic uh, sequencing of uh, uh, the types has been done and even for iodine deficiency disorders you know the universal iodinization program has come out of the research from this place okay next slide please i am unable to control uh, the slides from my end that is why i am telling next slide please so kindly excuse me for that and there is a beautiful uh, what is called as uh, an uh, implantation uh, uh, lab uh, that is an embryo implantation lab where uh, uh, you know, you have even uh, funding from foreign agencies, uh, Rockefeller and uh, Andrew Malone Foundation. This is maybe only U.S. center outside U.S. You know, to be funded for these things. And just see the Antarctica explorations, you know, the under extreme conditions, uh, how the body would react. And there also AIMS is there. As a major player, you have AIMS again coming into uh, the studies in Antarctica. Next slide, please. Now, AIMS Bhopal, okay, has uh, started studying on the effect of COVID vaccines. Uh, COVID vaccines, sorry, not the COVID vaccines, it's on the effects of COVID on the body. In the post-mortem studies, they're seeing how it affects the various organs, the vaccine trials. Even Geetham is one of the centers for vaccine trials. So we have uh, a major uh, uh, work even for this pandemic going on in these centers. You know, next slide, please. So if you look into uh, uh, the cardiac surgery part in AIMS, you must have noticed that I have not spoken a single word. The reason is that we are more into clinical practice in AIMS. And so translational research is what it counts. So if you look back, the applications of this research into practice, application of this research into practice into for patients, that is what we are driving at. So we were the first to do the transplant in the country, cardiac transplant. We were the first to put left ventricular assist devices in the country, inhale nitric oxide, robotic surgeries, and even minimally invasive surgery. So the focus in cardiac surgical research in AIMS is mainly based on translational pro projects. That is what they are focusing. Many, if you look at Chitra, they're trying to devise valves, they're trying to devise oxygenators. So they are doing basic research more than translational research. So that is the difference. So whenever you go in as a student into these centers, you should know what these research institutes are emphasizing. And then you have to join the place or join the team. Now, uh, if you have listened to the speech our Honorable Prime Minister has made in the 106th Science Congress, he was asking policymakers to inject research into central and state universities. Next slide, please. So this is where I want a change. See, after listening to me, everyone who has attended this speech has to turn into a researcher. Now, how do you do that? You have to learn to ask questions. See, it's your duty to think. 
most of us you know you may see a thing uh, but you know you don't think about it so that is the difference it's not intelligence it is that training the creativity training or the uh, pedagogy of uh, creative thinking that is what should come to you i'll show you a few pictures you will understand what you are missing so far so at the end of this speech every single person irrespective of your age is going to have a research idea in mind okay that is the purpose of my speech okay we'll go into the next one and don't look for answers here and there we are bombarded with knowledge and uh, techniques to ac access this knowledge and we should find answers to it ourselves and then we can take help also next slide please now what is research for me this is a beautiful slide you know which i thought i don't have to speak a single word you have to find the truth and truth is very closely linked with philosophy and that is why most philosophers are beautiful scientists and researchers also i'll tell you a concept which i have in mind which may be very controversial but just listen to me in two slides if you accept it it is fine otherwise also it's fine i believe that philosophy is the mother of all disciplines next slide please now what happens is that when you have a question without an answer who can look into this the only the philosopher can look into this and philosophers will try to find something now that is very abstract then it becomes a logic then it gets scientific experimentation truths by that time the speciality is good enough to leave the mother i'll tell you mathematics is a good example it just started with abstract concepts of numbers then you have mathematical logic and now you have theorems so many things so mathematics is a discipline separate from philosophy now i'll tell you an example the older mathematicians were good philosophers can you go to the next slide please see decades one of the statements he said that it's better to conquer yourself than conquering the world how can a mathematician tell that it is because at that time philosophy and mathematics philosophy was feeding mathematics so after some time mathematics developed into a full fledged science and it has moved out next slide please i'll show you one more example see don't think that aristotle was a interdisciplinary man i philosophy at that time was nurturing politics and science look at what he said the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it because you may have to change it that is essential thing of for research you have to be very flexible and if you you go and after the after my talk listen or uh, read up what these people have said you can understand the effect of philosophy in science in the earlier stages see once science has separated out now it is no longer uh philosophy's baby so it it has got everything to support on its own every single discipline that you see has emerged from philosophy next slide please <coughs> now this is another thing which i want everybody to understand it is not just bringing out a paper or making a device basic science and clinical research is very much interdependent so translational research has to come whatever you do has to come down to practice and serve the society only then it becomes complete next slide please see i'll tell you a single example i the, the elso meet in us which was conducted a few weeks back showed the advances in work on artificial placenta you can call it artificial extra uterine or artificial uterine environment can you see the first picture where a small sheep baby is inside a bottle of water or a tub of water see there is a cannulation of the neck and the umbilical vein this is the latest technique now see what has happened in the research you will see the next sheep there there is no water there we have uh, discovered techniques of putting perfluorocarbons into the endotracheal tube treat it like a fetus not like a baby it is not ventilation see circulatory system is supported now where does this find application extremely low birth weight or low gestational age neonates they are called elgans so if with 24 weeks some baby is born can you go to the next slide please see they can be delivered by ex utero intrapartum treatment and then put on a system of cardiopulmonary support or an ecmo support uh, and then use no anticoagulants so this is the wonder so in the last few weeks or for a few months the technique called nosa has come can you go to the next slide please see this is the application of that in practice you have a local electrochemical nitric oxide generator and a coating see i was attending tri biology faculty development programs in geetham beautiful uh, interdisciplinary application of science 
So this coating plus this nitric oxide means that you don't have to give any anticoagulants. So that means it is going to make cardiac surgery much, much, much more safe. And you know, small babies can be supported. So this is what research has to go in. So it is not creation of an artificial placenta. In doing that, the outcome of that study is now helping even very small babies born, elgans that we call, they can survive. So that is the application of research. So that is where we have to reach. Whatever we do has to come down as a product serving the society, serving humanity. That is what we need. Okay, next slide, please. And, uh, you know, I don't have to introduce the person. You know, he said imagination is more important than knowledge. Why? Knowledge is limited. Any type of information that you try to gather from your senses has to be reinforced, rechecked. And, you know, maybe uh, your imagination should fly high. And uh, there is no limits. You can imagine anything, anything. And that is the way to invent and go forward. Primary research comes from imagination only. Secondary research is something, knowledge is already there. You are trying to re-engineer, reinvent something that is fine. Your phone, you don't feel your phone is good enough. You make alteration to that. Your car is not good enough. You make alteration to that. But for primary research, imagination is the key. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, this is the fun. I told you creative thinking. Creative thinking means you should train your mind to ask questions. What kind of questions? See, what uh, there's a picture there. You can see a stroke or a flamingo standing in one leg. Okay. Now, why should it stand on one leg? Have you ever thought about it? You have also seen it. I have seen it. But you should think about this. Go to Google. Find out. Ask your teachers. Find out. Use your mind. Start using your mind. Collect information. Write it down on a paper. Find out what is going on. See? You have already become a researcher, isn't it? See, all the children who have seen this slide to become a researcher, it's not anything. You don't require a genius or anything like that. None of them who has done primary research and given productive things to society, they are all common people, but they have trained their mind, trained their mind. See, an elephant can ride a bicycle. Training, training is all what is needed. So every single student from fifth standard or even below that, your teachers and parents should train your children to ask questions. It is uncomfortable, but tell them we will find the answer collectively. Tell them, I don't know. I'll ask somebody and tell you. That is the honest way to go forward. If you fire them and keep them quiet in the class, this is not the way to go forward. Let them ask plenty of questions, hundreds of questions. If you have a one-hour class, 30 minutes is the class and 30 minutes is the question time. Then we are going to reach somewhere. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, the, the knowledge doesn't come just like that. You have to assimilate, analyze, and then create knowledge. And this is a continuous sustainable life, like building a house. You have the foundation, the walls, and then the roof. See, there are some flowers there, which I saw today morning. First one was given to me by, by my sister, who is a dentist. Look at that the petals. You have eight petals. The second one I found on the walk, there are again eight petals. See, the total pattern is different. But why? What makes a flower what decides the number of petals? What decides the color of uh, pollens? Where they should be? Why there is a difference in the shade of the color? The other one is from my wife's vegetable garden. You can see the lady's finger there. Well, see the beautiful designs. Why it is there? Well, the, what decides the number of petals? What is the function of the flower? Can you decide on any of the properties of the plant from the flower? Is the arrangement of leaves related to the arrangement of worlds? Any properties of the plant that is known through this? So, see, research has already started in this meeting, just from one picture. So, this is what you should know. This is what you should understand. And research is a very simple thing. It is just training your mind to ask questions. Okay, next slide, please. Time. You should find time for research. And also, uh, it research takes time. It takes time. So, you should not be in a hurry. Okay, next slide. And you have to be very flexible because... The many ideas with which you started the research, the research may prove wrong. So you should be ready to change any second, any minute. So you have to be completely open like a child's mind. And the problem is not the thing you have to focus on. Whatever creates the problem, we cannot solve a problem with that. This is already told by Einstein, but I would like to say that you focus on solutions. I have identified the problem and this is the solution I'm going to. This is how I'm going to work too. That is where the emphasis is, not on the problem. Every problem is an opportunity to give a solution. Okay. 
and look at this you should have a good teamwork good connectivity that is where a mentor comes in he connects you to everybody within the department outside the disciplines in the university at national level at international level see when i started my program on total artificial heart i called up uh, another sir so the proof of concept i went to iit kharagpur i went there i was coming on the car back he he volunteered he gave me a call back he said pradeep your work is over there i said yes then he said you need funding i'll call up drdo and i'll talk to them see this is how it works and it's very very important this connectivity is the core and connectivity is the core don't think you are in a village in kerala i can't do anything nothing like that even from the remotest corner of tamil nadu you can currently get connected to anybody anywhere in the world and there are people like another racer who are always ready to help so be bold make multiple attempts and you know and never say uh, no that that is the concept that something you can't do there is nothing like that you should reset readjust restart refocus do it as many times you know the edison story do it as many times as you want okay and you should get new skills you have to have computer skills i'm just showing computer as an example because so many things are related to computer but you need more and more and more new skills next one and people may think that the government is wasting money on clinical research no see the only a small chunk the other things are non clinical research next slide please see there are so many steps this steps should be clear even to a school student so as added hours in vacation classes this should be taught how to do research that is very very important there should be no bias you should know how to sample and all those things should be picked up it is not something for a postgraduate class it should a school student should know how he should do do a sampling how he should do it and not for marks it should never be marked for marks you just teach him how to do it in his vacation times vacation class you know you just call them up for a day or two or a small workshop teach them how to do it show them how to do the sampling show them how to cover errors how you can do a sampling without a bias there that is where it counts next next please and the 10 steps you can see everywhere in the internet but i'll tell you for a research idea you need to have a skill what skill creative thinking and reading so that should come from your school from your home day to day activities you should have to develop that see for example you have to search literature you should have computer skills you should know how to search databases i'll go to the next slide so you you can just remember this slide and once you become a researcher you have an ethical social and legal responsibility and the confidentiality has to be maintained especially when you are dealing with uh, patients next slide please see the vaccine you cannot just push a vaccine into the market it has to go through various phase trials safety has to be ensured and only then it has to hit the market so there are various steps next slide please okay this is the amazing work done by drdo you can see it heads the country's list you, you are very lucky to have this program organized we never had anything like this for uh, children and you should uh, you should be very very happy and thankful to the organizers for having organized a meeting like this where you know people from all the major institutes have come in and spoken to you to guide you to inspire you to very very high levels okay next night please and again see the government as well as the private place you cannot have research from government funding alone private place has to come up in a very big way that is the way forward next slide please and india is making a big global footprint right now we have already identified institutes of uh, eminence education policies and you know uh, once everyone contributes we are going to have a steady successful economic growth and people are going to look to india as an answer where can you find uh, quality research in this oh india is the country so they will come to us so that is the stage where we are moving in and you should jump in jump into this wagon as students this is the best time for you okay next slide please and uh, we have some drawbacks see for example these uh, numbers are only very roughly placed 1.3 billion population 200 researchers possibly in us it is around 20 times more so we need more and more people coming in and you have to have this habit of thinking and it should come as a natural response natural response so you become a doctor engineer lawyer social scientist genetics or an architectural guy you can have a interdisciplinary interaction come together and do something for science it's very very easy very very easy okay next slide please 
and you have to have uh, the mentality. I told you the culture of critical thinking as a pedagogy should come into curriculum practice. And teaching and research is not separate. They have to be unified and experimentation. And that is something which, again, you should not drop. Just make small, small experiments and see whether they work. You can do it at home. There are so many YouTube sites showing you small, small experiments. Just see them. Try it. Try it at home. And then you will understand the fun and the thrill and the excitement behind it. So that is what is lacking right now. Science should go and touch experiments daily as a routine. Next slide, please. Okay, the way forward, you know, the government has already taken steps. You can see National Higher Education Mission, NIRF, Institutes of Eminence, Prime Minister's Research Fellowships. Next slide, please. So these are all, uh, you know, steps which uh, the government of India has taken, but it is not enough. We should look to other countries in the world. What are they doing? How are they going ahead? See, they are all into undergraduate research. See, you are OPs, are undergraduate research opportunities program. You have summer conferences, workshops, fellowships. Okay, you can even volunteer for these programs, even if you're not selected. Next slide, please. See, cure. I think this is a wonderful thing. You see, all the students in the class are grouped into 5, 10, or 15, and you have a mentor. Everybody does research. So everybody gets an opportunity. It is all inclusive. Next slide, please. And you, uh, through your entire course, you are able to do the area of research. You understand the depth of the problem. You know how to handle research. And once you turn out to be an engineer or a super specialist, you can uh, use this experience to do wonderful things in future. So QR should be a part of our educational training. The other one is URE. Can you go to the next slide? So we have uh, KVPY, STS, and so many other Indian programs where a competitive examination is done. Few people are selected, then you have a mentor. Next slide, please. You are funded and then uh, you are selected. So URI limits actually research things and the education policy should be revamped and you should support research, expose students to research so that they appreciate the research methodology and they are able to apply it to relevant practice. Next slide, please. You may, you may ask me a single question, why this unnecessary thing? We are happy with what we are doing. No. Research actually increases your research ability. It, you, it makes you a more confident individual, more creative, higher critical thinking. Your problem solving skills will go up. You have intellectual independence. And what, what is going to happen is that, you know, the people who are deprived of education and uh, they also come in. The students come in, more and more ladies also start joining, more and more people who enter into education feel that, okay, I have to do this, I have to do that. So they go into graduation, post-graduation. So you have more and more enrollment, more mentorships. So it's, it's a fantastic thing. So the way you look at it, you are going to be an absolutely different person with uh, when you start doing the research. So if you have got A+, plus when you are a student with research, you are A++++. Plus plus plus. So just think about that situation. Okay, next slide, please. And look at these universities, world-class universities, they have undergraduate research programs. The first four, in the same name that I mentioned, the other people have put different names. That's all. And we should beat them. For uh, Our schools also should start it. Everybody, you see 1.3 billion researchers in the country, they are going to do something. Okay? And you are the youth and you are the young force on which we have to depend. And you can have a beautiful thing. You can set an example to the world. So that is where it should start. And we should start coaching them, training them in creative thinking, experimentation when they're very young. So a student who passes plus two should know exactly what are the correct research methodology methods. Okay. See the time in which you wait for your exam results. All these schools, universities can conduct a research methodology program for you. They can bring in external instructors to train you. Next slide, please. Okay, so I don't want to have a focus on the left-hand side of the slide. Right is what we are going to do. You should rethink, redesign the curriculum, bring in projects of relevance, create more jobs and professional skill workshops. That is inclusive for teachers. That is what I think, and parents. So this is going to make a huge, huge difference in our research scenario. Next slide, please. And the institution has to be committed. Is there a school for an undergraduate office for a research in the school? It should, they should have it. There should be an office for undergraduate research in all schools, all universities. So the institutional commitment is the first step. Okay, next slide, please. 
and it is already started you know there are many methods like nias next slide please you have uh, indian institute of science education and research having definite programs for this next slide please and you should not stop here now you have 20 million first generation learners coming up through the undergraduate research programs so they are going to tackle real world challenges for you and uh, i still emphasize that more and more the girls are lacking behind in education in our country we should push them up science technology and i call it STEMI. you know we use it as a form of myocardial infarction STEMI and non STEMI. but here the STEMI means science technology engineering and mathematics okay next slide please and now I have finished most of the things. I'll just tell you how Total Artificial Heart is a research project, which may, you may think that is through the hat. Okay, it's a very high funder research, you know, we can't do it. It's not like that. See, there are 64 million people suffering from this disease and around 4 lakh deaths in a year. And 50% is going to die in 5 years. So what are you going to do? There are only 7,000 transplants or 8,000 transplants. For the remaining persons, there is nothing available. So where are you going to treat these patients? A person who has done a transplant, he's rejected. A person who has an infiltrative disease of the heart. Next slide, please. A small ventricle, a thrombus, a, or a device. He's already on a device. He cannot do anything. The device is failing, clotting. Don't try to read it. I'm just telling it. A patient who is in ECMO or in a small ventricle with a thrombus or valvular degeneration or structurally gone heart, complex congenital hearts, there is no treatment right now. So for these persons, we need an artificial heart. Okay, now we'll just go into a small history, very exciting history for this. Next slide, please. See, the three persons there, I was fortunate enough to be with them. And the person on the left is Olson, with whom I worked in uh, University of Utah. The person in center, you should know, is William Korf. He came to Cleveland, he came to Utah, he is the father of artificial organs, as I would call. And the person on the left-hand side is Jarvik, who developed the pneumatic heart and that has taken shape as Syncardia right now, is the only available total artificial heart in the world now of the 13 designs. Okay, next slide, please. And uh, given in the picture is Michael DeBakey. He had an engineer or support from an Argentinian brain Leota, the Leota heart, when Debeki went to get funding for, next slide please, I'll show you what happened. Debeki went to get funding for total artificial heart. See, every research needs funding. At that time, you know, Denon Cooley did uh, the job which he was supposed to do. And these two people were uh, not even seeing eye to eye for many years. And this is one of the biggest stories in cardiac surgery. Next slide please. Now, the Leota heart, then the Jarvik 7 heart, after Corf step down was taken over by various companies and now it has become Syncardia, what you see on the right hand side. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the freedom driver uh, which pumps in air. So, you know, the, the development of this device allowed these people to walk around freely. Okay, next slide, please. Now, this is another beautiful artificial heart, which I would, I would say is a work of brain because this is fully implantable total artificial heart with transcutaneous energy charging devices and Fraser can be seen in that picture too. But again, it didn't survive the strength of time. Next slide. And this is a beautiful engineering concept of a very complicated design of Carpentier called Carmack total artificial heart. Again, could not uh, come out into good successful practice. Next slide, please. So what happened was that people were trying to support the ventricles with small devices. Can you see that picture where a pump comes out of the left ventricle and it is pumped to the iota? So these are called ventricular assist devices. And we did it in Ames first in the country with the help of Valvano Subramaniam, who is also working with me for uh, the Total Artificial Heart Program. And uh, this VADS, uh, next slide please. A lot of them came into a clinical picture and a lot of them were being used. So then what happened was that, next slide please. We thought, you know, if you use two vines, it will work like an artificial heart. No? So that is what people were trying to do after that. Next slide please. I suppose I'm very clear. So what happened was that we had, there was some uh, Jarvik uh, uh, L vines which were available. So that was put, the, can you see the right hand picture where the graphs are placed? Is connected through graphs and the cow in which it was implanted is on the top. Very successful results in that. Next slide, please. But the small problem was that clots were developing. So what you know the Maguire effect, no? 
whatever is available locally, you convert it into a weapon to attack. So the Dimeki devices were available and with locally available devices, this was connected in the same way as we showed the previous slide. Next slide, please. And these gave very good results, but then we had small issue. The upper right hand metal thing, can you see a clot there, a red punch there? So that is a clot there, but the devices became started becoming smaller. The first device was bigger. Now this is a small device which can fit into the hand. Okay, next slide, please. So total artificial hearts were, now this is an engineer with amyloidosis, and he was the first person who received a total artificial heart design in this way, but he succumbed to the disease. The disease affects kidneys and other organs, and so, and uh, this engineer was willing. He said, you know, he's ready for uh, advancement in science. So he said, you can put it on me and see. So that was the indication. And next slide, please. And uh, I should say that the person holding the heart on the left hand bottom corner is Daniel Timms. You know what he did? Can you see the picture never give up strategy? The, this was not working. So what he did it was that he used 3D printing with a single mo mobile part. And uh, he did it in plastic and he recreated this heart into a new shape. Next slide, please. Yeah, can you see this? This is a 3D printed heart and the cow in which it was put is on top. And the Karmat heart is shown on the abio core, is shown on the other side, the person holding it. See how small it is and how quickly you can use the technology to support your ideas. It is a 3D printed plastic heart which has been used. And below, can you see an arterial pulse form? So the previous artificial hearts were without pulse. So imagine a human being with an artificial heart sitting there without pulse. So a pulse is not necessary for life. So whatever you thought for 15 years or 20 years or 50 years, now in one second it is gone. So a feeling of pulse is not important or is not necessary to say that a human being has a working heart. So with a, a, a non-pulsatile flow devices, you don't have a pulse. But this one, they varied the speed and generated a pulse. Can you see that it is as good as a general pulse? You can feel the pulsations on the tubings. If you hold it, you can feel the pulsations. Next slide, please. And uh, then uh, the 3D printing technology went up zoom. So laser technology was used. Titanium is used now as the device. And you can see the implanted titanium also, titanium heart. Next slide, please. So we were designing, even now these implanted hearts have got a lot of problems. So with uh, an issue of uh, taking away all the problems, solving all the problems, at Geetham University, we started uh, with very good support from the administration and the engineering side, IIT Karakpur, DRDO, and all these people we have launched into this program through Make in India program. I have called it Sai Spandan. And uh, what we are planning is a hybrid BSR. That is, this heart will not have any bearings. The motor will not have any bearings. It will be a titanium heart with a special coating to prevent clotting. And it will be fully implantable, no valves, and uh, 10 liters to 23 liters would be the output capacity and expected energy uh, uh, requirements would be around 12 volts. It would be a pulsatile with a normal circuitry arrangement with the automatic right-left balancing double motors. For the first time, it would be a double motor uh, circuit and uh, magnetic levitation, and we have created wide blood gap so that it doesn't clot would be a six into six centimeter device. So this is what uh, we are attempting. It will take a few years, but we are already on this right path. And this is the shape of uh, the Indian total artificial heart. Once it would come out, we will have uh, prosthetic devices to connect to this. And there may be slight design modifications on this so that we can separate it and use it as vans also. Next slide, please. And, uh, and this is the one which shows the scientific publications and all India ranks from third to sixth and this is a wonderful progress that we have made next slide please and again uh, i can't see this slide from the the number of uh, patent applications again you see the international patents from india has increased so again it clearly shows that we are on the right track and uh, next slide please and uh, you know i have a dream see that is my picture uh, where, uh, you know, I have done an eight year, nine year study on computational fluid dynamics presented in the World Cardiac Surgery Congress in Bangalore. And that is the prize for that. You know, all the recipients of uh, research prizes are there. And one of my senior professors, a cardiac surgeon, is also there on stage there with me. I believe that, you know, the importance is in the nature of your work, 
not where you are doing it or how you are doing it. The institutes should be actually uh, what I call as uh, you know inspiring factors and you know promoting factors in the thing. And you should have a blending of research. All the specialists, if I want some help from IIT or ISRO or uh, DRDO, it should be readily available. Not that I'm working in Geetham right now, so they will not help me. That attitude should go away. We should have a specialized institutes. That is, uh, it should be like uh, what uh, grants are given in NIH or something. See, like if I'm working on total artificial heart, I should be able to join with all the teams on total artificial heart, not only in this country, but globally. That is what my dream is. That is, the research is not drawn within institutes, within nations. It goes beyond. We have, we have an international collaboration and the humanity benefits. And you have to renovate, resurrect, and rejuvenate higher education for this. You know, the not only the students, but the management side, the politicians, everybody should have a very broad-minded thinking when it comes to research because we have to benefit as a race. Tomorrow, we have to see our consciousness. See, if you read Ramajan, Ramanujan's story, you know there is a collective super consciousness from which we can draw in data. And there is a Russian uh, person in AI who is trying to connect with robotic consciousness. So that is the way to future. See, one, there is a big data sharing area into which we can meditate, reach that stage, collect data, and use it for the benefit of humanity. So, you know, these are all interlinked, science, philosophy, and, uh, you know, the ultimate truth, everything is interlinked. And like Swami Vivekananda has said, you know, if your heart is pure, the entire truth will just manifest in it in very second, in a very few seconds. So, you know, the purpose of all disciplines, all research is the same. It makes you the best human being. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope I have evoked the research interest in you. And from this second onwards, everyone who listened to this speech has become a researcher. And you will start following this research mentality. Wish you all success. There are two videos I have, but I don't know whether I'll be able to share it with you. And you, you can actually, it contains some operative videos and other things. I'm not able to share it with you because, you know, this, if the screen sharing gets all right, when you're asking questions, I will allow you to uh, see the videos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the organizers also. It's a wonderful, innovative effort. I feel the whole country should get the benefit of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar. Uh, very silent, but very sharp, very focused, and very, 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 very finer words that each and every student should take uh, uh, out of this. But as uh, due to technical reasons, we are not able to play the video. But however, uh, after the session is over, we will reconnect and place that video in this YouTube and uh, people who are viewing now will have the facility to view it later. Uh, sir, uh, wonderful that the country that in your speech that you had said that Makkala on the research get it now, didn't they? My only... No, they should take the research from their home itself. Oh, fantastic, sir. You have to start from home. எனக்குவெல்த் <laughs> 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 And you said the research should start from the home. Uh, can you please elaborate three minutes or two minutes that each of the student, how they should really sharpen and do a razor focus research at the school level and uh, so that they get into that right researchers at their post level. Yeah. You know, it is basically a condensation of uh, what I have been telling uh, throughout the entire speech. First thing is you should have uh, creative uh, thinking. And this begins by starting asking questions. I showed you the picture of a flower. Why should it have uh, eight petals? Can anybody tell me what is the average number of petals? 
and what is the percentage of colors in the petals of the flowers. Nobody has done a research on this. Nobody can give you a straightforward answer. You may say there is a gene called epitalin which decides it. Then what, why should the upper flower have that arrangement and the lower flower has this arrangement? See, you can give an answer to these questions if you start looking into it. So you encourage uh, the child as a mother and father to ask one good question or you put that question into their mind. Initially, if they are not thinking, you can put a good question into their mind. Don't fear that, you know, I am not able to answer. What will the child think about me? No, it's not like that. You should tell them that we will collectively come. We will look into the internet for the answer of this. So it starts at home. Mother or father is the first mentor. Okay. Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam. Okay. The teacher is also there. So next, first is the, the child is with the parents. So at that stage, you start. When the teacher comes, the teacher has to be trained that, you know, the child should have a creative thinking. So they should, they, instead of playing with the ball, just ask, why this ball? Take a big ball and a smaller ball, throw it on the ground, see which comes above. And why the smaller ball or which one did not come up? Or take some experiments like that. Make them, bring a small experiment onto the table. Show it to the children in the class. UG classes, uh, LG classes, you know, don't think children, it's a blank mind. That is the best place, you know, they can start learning things. So if you don't have, see, don't say that, you know, my school is a village school. There is nothing. You come to the city once in a week. You can download science experiments from the YouTube video. You can show it to them on your phone. If, if your school doesn't have the facilities, you can show it to them on the phone. There are plenty of methods. Don't, don't you know, say no as an answer. This is what Professor Venugopal used to say. I don't want no as an answer. There is no word called sorry. Uh, in cardiac surgery. If you say sorry, the patient is dead. So you have to be perfect in planning your steps. So it's the same way. There is no no as an answer. There is a way to get things done. So that is what is most important. See, that is the same thing Einstein said. Problems, the way problems are created, you cannot create solutions. So you have to look from some other angle to that. So that is precisely, you want a collection of, you know, at least in a school, you have one or two teachers in a class, in a division, who can make children think differently. You have put them on the right track. See, summer courses, you are uh, conducting classes on dance, music, clay modeling. All should be there. Sports, everything should be there. But conduct one class. One class for half an hour on research methodology. Very simple way. Bringing in some beads or some coins or something and show how a sampling is done. How an error comes into practice. Make them write a small thing. Do a research on a small thing like a flower or uh, something. You see, imagine a plant coming as a seed, growing up with the right environment. It becomes a tree. It bears fruits, everything. See, the entire growth to social service, it has not moved from that place. How much perfectly it should be genetically programmed for a seed to make a, grow into a tree in a single place, in a single place, and then give everything. If I allow a small human being to stand in one place and develop into a super specialist like a cardiac surgeon or an engineer, can you do that? So just imagine the genetic engineering of a tree. It's amazing. You have to think. You have to think. You have to think differently. See, I showed you a picture. When you go out, you can see a stalk or a flamingo standing in one leg. But why should it stand like that? Nothing in nature comes as a base. You must be thinking that there is a small village in Africa which cannot have food. But look at a tree. If a tree can grow there, what does it use? Sunlight, air molecules, isn't it? Water, and it gives you a fruit to eat. No emissions, no pollution of the atmosphere. So if you want a food factory, just imitate a tree. Has somebody tried creating a photosynthetic eatable product till now? So that is what we should focus on. If you allow these children to think from day one, we are going to have a different country. In another 10 years, people will be coming to India to learn things. That is the way we should change. That is the way the change has to be seen. So it starts from home. Don't expect government to do everything for you. Don't expect institutes to do anything for you. See, when I was uh, initially launching the project, they asked, where is the ecosystem for you to do it? I said, the whole country is the ecosystem. The whole world is the ecosystem. I just wrote a letter to Professor Daesh in IIT Kharagpur. He said, either I am coming there or you are coming here. See, see the love and affection. I have never seen him in my life till that time. And he said, you come and present here. You can see this. I wanted to see a mock circulatory loop in IIT Kharagpur. 
So when I went there, he said, the idea is fine. You go ahead with that. So we went to DRDO. And you know, the entire Geetham administrative staff helped me. See, when I was presenting in the engineers meet, I'm only a surgeon. I said, this is what I need in, in practice. I need, this is what I need. One of the uh, working professors came and told me, okay, sir, I think this may suit your heart. Then I had to study about it. And you know, I had to change the entire slides one day before my presentation. And now I'm not sure whether, you know, we can go ahead and miniaturize it to the levels I want. But still we have taken up the challenge. We have taken up the challenge. You can have a machine or a motor without bearings with magnetic levitation, which Olsen showed me so many years back, 10, 15 years back, he showed it to me on his table. So these are things, you know, nothing happens. See, there is a predictability in everything, even for, you know, you say life is unpredictable, but if you expand your knowledge, everything is predictable. And you see, look at uh, artificial intelligence. When they went with synchronous mode, you know, they could not do many things. Now it is into asynchronous mode. They are having neural chips. You will have, uh, you know, robots uh, understanding your uh, uh, thoughts. They will be able to communicate with you. Or maybe sometimes, you know, human beings who can communicate without language. Teleportation is a possibility. So if all these things has to come up, India has the brains. You know, we are not trained to think. Somewhere we lost this experimentation and critical thinking. This has to come back. This has to come back. And each one of you has the potential to become a big researcher for this country, for the world, for the humanity. Start it today itself, right now. Don't postpone it. Uh, with which uh, the Fiji, India Rap, and the Hindu travel travel, I'm sure you are focused, razor focus on making the students research focus will start after this webinar. And the parents who are all viewing this. Uh, please give the fullest support to your kids, not only to your kids, any kid who comes to you and looks up to you for research. And I'm sure the, the last the result that we derive out of this webinar, what Fiji is envisaged, what India is envisaged, and what the Hindu Tamil Desai is envisaging is all of you will become tomorrow's scientists and make tomorrow to become tomorrow scientist start the research today and we will all be successful sir before i go into the question answer for the viewers let me reiterate that tomorrow we will reassemble here at six o'clock uh, for the wonderful webinar ungal engal dr v delhi baba medical and engineering joint research opportunities. Uh, Dr. V. Delibov Avargal, or a scientist from DRDO, and is a director for India. Night Kalamai, Sariyaga Armani K. Trip Mudal Nal, Mudal Villi Kalamai Vandavar, in the webinar, inaugurate Say the Tiponavar, Padma Street, Dr. Mailswami Annadore Avargal. He is going to do the concluding session. Research as a career option. Other can aditalam, illarme, vitargal. Ways and means. Research as a career option, ways and means. By Parmashri Dr. Mailsami Annadurai, ex project director Chandrayan, ex project director Mangalyan, and currently the chairman of NDRF. Iveral Yerendi Perundan, either can a Walunurgalium, Alumigalium, Kunduande, Ungalade, Padaitavargal. Agaway, Dayu Saide, Ungala Kareta in the Patana Lanubavutai, Mindu, Urumare Sulgrain, Ungala Kamail Vandulade, are they refer Pandina, Inu or Anjibeku by Serum Bolade in the Nart Tel Mega 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 Jastian Arachal Gulum, Scientist Gulum, Doctor Vergulum, in the Maricovic situation on the China medicine and contributor to Nera Malame, the Anjar Mas and Tandito, Agaway, Anda or Nilay Aha Kuda, the Indra the Kadan. India of Indamari or Velen or Liu, Fiji, they support Say the Kunde, Hindu Tamil to say the Mulaka Padaka Kunde Rikirade. Agaway, Ningal Kelvigal Kekala, Kelvigal Ipanaram in Rayanla, our Gabunde, our email Purpanga, our Ling Elium Kekala. Sir, we will go into the questions. I will flash it on the screen for you to answer. We will take questions for another 10 minutes and we will wind up the session, sir. I shall try to answer them, otherwise, we will collectively answer it. Okay. Yeah, PCR, uh, you know, I am basically a cardiac surgeon, so I don't go into the details. 
basically uh, it is only uh, you have studied it is a polymerase chain reaction and how it amplifies and uh, how it detects uh, basically the DNA content and if it is an RNA virus how it is transfer how the RNA is transferred into that and how quickly you can do it you can have uh, a PCR uh, to be a very specific test for uh, diagnosis also and AIMS has got a lot of research into it but I know I am technical details you know I am a cardiac surgeon uh, so I may not be able to go into the details of it. Uh, yeah robotic surgery is also at the current state we have robotic uh, cardiac catheter interventions and surgeries also and uh, we need a surgeon actually it's not that the robot does everything we actually have sit in a console and control everything from a distance and you need not be inside the operating room that is all but you have to have a human being sitting somewhere and doing it but the complete uh, surgery being done by a robot uh, is being in uh, a few neurosurgical procedures and a few other procedures you know and experimental work is going on but you know, not that you know the complete uh, thing is done uh, without us but it would be a good advance because we are looking into space travel and other things you know where you know we know, may not be able to get the required assistance at that distance in a quick time so that is what we are striving at yeah it has to be kept as minimum as possible around I try to imitate nature to succeed that's a good question I liked it yeah, because if you are trying for anything to be implanted inside the human body, try to keep it uh, as normal as possible. So if your heart is around 250 to 380 grams of weight, try to keep the artificial heart also like that. So uh, it will be roughly around that uh, side. Yeah, material I told you, you, you can try various materials. But you know, if you try a material which is already established and in practice, you don't have to test biocompatibility and animal... Uh, uh, compatibility studies and uh, tissue compatibility studies and other things uh, which has to be done in a good uh, labs for long periods of time and uh, again in, uh, implants uh, uh, has got every body the way it reacts to an implant is different we are trying uh, you know there is one senior professor from IIT who has joined Geetham who is actually trying the effects of Raman spectroscopy on implants now I'm trying to extend it to total artificial heart also, but titanium is a quick way of uh, getting it. It's lightweight and you know, biocompatible surface modifications are possible. Yeah, see total, uh, uh, when you say artificial heart, you have two groups. That is total artificial heart where we cut away the ventricles and our machine does the job. And uh, ventricular assist devices where your uh, original ventricle is there and uh, the device only helps the ventricles to function. So I am basically into the higher range of research of total artificial hearts where the heart is explanted, uh, uh, native heart, the ventricles are gone and uh, this machine functions. Yeah, see this is good, good, good. Uh, Panush Shankar, see this is uh, what I said, you know, critical thinking is working. See, just because I'm telling you that uh, I'm going to make an artificial heart with titanium, that doesn't mean that you have to make an artificial heart with titanium. You can have a scaffold on the which you can grow normal tissues, like what you said, myogenic tissues. And uh, you can actually control the growth of stem cells into myogenic or uh, blood, uh, tissues. Uh, by controlling the cardiac genes that also I am trying to work on uh, so that you know we can the group one or group two genes we can control the development of valves and heart and you can generate it but it will take a little time see for example I have to develop an adult heart to suit a 40 year old man it is get uh, the growth will take a few few months or years uh, to reach that stage so you you cannot have a ready-made heart made quickly but still you can do it. You can grow it on scaffold, but again, time is a factor, but it will be uh, more uh, like a normal heart and less complications of artificial surface. So this is what I say critical thinking is about. And uh, yeah, robots may malfunction, anything may malfunction, and you know anything man-made can malfunction, and even our body malfunctions. So we have a sequence of steps in place whereby we take over and do an open surgery, okay? Yeah, see, why do you doubt it? Because uh, we are actually doing the job of the uterus right now with that artificial uterine environment, which I told you, very small babies manage like fetuses, they can work. Uh, the artificial organs, very good quality of life. You can see people going for games and exercises with that. And uh, there is no more uh, major hospitalizations or you have artificial pancreas. 
you have artificial kidneys, you through dialysis membranes. And in fact, uh, what are you trying to do with robots? Would you like your friend to be emotional with you, communicate with you, correct you when you are wrong, support you when you go astray? Isn't it? So you need a perfect robot, isn't it? So that is where again uh, the full artificial human being is possible. Like you know, for treatment, we need a digital twin. See how can I know whether my organ or a particular implant is going to work in you? I create a digital twin of you and then check whether this is going to work in your digital twin. Okay. Yeah, vaccine again, you should find the antigenic component and then uh, test it through the phase trials, which I told you the antigen should be able to develop antibodies at the same time, it should not produce the disease and a uh, lot of things to be done. So that is why, you know, FDA and uh, President Trump is having a fight with each other, where FDA says it is going to take time and Trump says we are not going to listen to the guidelines. So, you know, science is not something which, you know, you can bypass the rules. We, what is it? So can you say which is best to study MBBS? No, you are the best person, my dear child. Wherever you are, you are the best person. You are the university. And uh, uh, it's not the institute. Everything is there digitally, you know. Uh, Harvard University can come through an open MOOC course into your uh, study table. So why do you want to look after run behind colleges? Stay in a college nearby, it will be comfortable for you, study well <laughs> and go through, see what does a big institute do? It gives you an ambience to work, an attitude to work. See, that can be developed in even very small institutes. See, uh, whoever asked that question, I don't, I couldn't recollect the name. You should understand that, you know, you are the person who is going to decide what kind of institute is going to be that. So if you work well, your institute will recognize. AIMS is now spreading across the country. Now make every institute, every college look like AIMS. The students should take up the challenge. Yeah. No. See, titanium is biocompatible. And once uh, we have a specialized coating on that, it looks like an endothelium surface. Titanium per se doesn't have any issues. You have multiple implants, ephemeral heads, a lot of uh, biological implants with titanium and biocompatibility is well proved. Well proved, no issues. Everything. You know, you should not look at organs. Bala Shanmugesh. Huh? You should uh, aim at creating a full human artificial being. Okay. Yeah, see, for that, it depends on the device, Anand Krishna. Uh, that's again a good question. You're thinking about how it is functioning. Blood clots can happen inside it if you're using too much of synthetic devices where the blood flow patterns are sluggish or turbulence is there or you are using metallic bands. So one way to overcome is the very good coatings. And, you know, you have, see, the bio buyback core heart, which I showed you, they had a shunt from the aortic side to the venous side to wash away the clots. There are so many techniques, you know, that is a problem. It is there, anticoagulation is an issue, but we are, technologically, we are going very, very forward. See, like Sai Spandam doesn't have an artificial valve, nothing. And big blood spaces, the spaces are quite big. Ah, lifespan is, you know, I'll tell you something. If you put an artificial heart valve, the person may die but the heart valve will still be functioning. It will be a good valve inside. Other than uh, issues like clots and structural issues, longevity of uh, mechanical devices is much more than a human life. So normally you don't have, uh, unless you have a fracture or displacement of a device, something like that, or infection or clot, which ensures removal and uh, in a surface coatings, which at some stage becomes unacceptable uh, with, uh, because of penis formation and other things, you may have to take it out. Otherwise, uh, in a human life, is take it as 100 years, 120 years. So these are very good, good enough to withstand a human lifespan. Yeah. So uh, in, in, uh, that is, uh, I told you the indications, you know, when you have uh, extreme types of congenital heart diseases, very complex types where you can't have uh, uh, life being sustained or an infiltrative disease in the heart, very small ventricles, clots inside the ventricles 
valves having regurgitations or am I extensively damaging the heart arrhythmias? They have become a new indication. So in all this, you have done a transplant and the person has rejected the heart transplant. The body has rejected it. What will you do? You need an artificial heart. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to show you the videos of all these things. The cows and all are running around. All the animals. We have human beings supported by these things for over 600 life years. No complications of the device. We are scared. We are scared and we change to a transplant. So that is the issue. There is no issue otherwise. Yeah. See, it's only a question of how you are studying, isn't it? This is exactly what I said. What is there abroad? You may have little more labs, a little more facilities, little more operations. We have all these things, medical facilities. India is one of the finest centers. We have medical tourism. See, we are operating on people from Syria, from Maldives, from Singapore, from Egypt, you know, even from Tajikistan. And they are all coming here to India to get a heart operation done. From US, I have so many patients from US which have been operated by us, UK. And, uh, you know, they find India a better place to come and get operated upon. So it's not uh, the old system, you know. We have gone far, far ahead. Yeah, it's all devices. No, I don't say chemical, but, you know, they have uh, material things in them, okay. Even the natural organs are made up of materials, you know. See, once we uh, are able to generate uh, scaffolds which resemble cellulose or lignin or collagen, we can have natural uh, replacements. Just like, you know, you have a hard drive uh, being damaged or a part of the computer being damaged, you go and buy one and replace it. No? So in the same way, a stage will come where uh, everything is available. Uh, sir, there is a lot of appreciations falling in our uh, chat box. And... Uh, there is a lot of appreciation, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, this is also, uh, we are getting a lot of questions because of the uh, inquisitiveness that you have uh, sowed the seed today yeah. for asking questions. Because the medical to... director came first and said, please listen, prepare your questions and ask, and you will receive a gift. I am sure students have a lot of questions in their mind. And uh, they will definitely, this time is not enough for us to take all the questions. But uh, we will flow your uh, email down in this uh, web uh, webinar so that uh, you will, uh, people can uh, definitely Thank you. Uh, directly to him. And uh, maybe you can select, uh, already you have selected the better, best questions. So, sure. Uh, there is a lot more questions that will hit you. Once the webinar is over, please watch down your chat box, sir, your email box. You will have a lot of questions, sir. Uh, so, uh, the students, dear students, your questions were to the point, understood, which means you have followed. Our video way, upload in the name, the webinar, the last one that upload Pandra, I mean, and Chitra go definitely upload Pani, the raw illa, dinner, or emails in a Taniavo, or the Anaspur clan, our get a permission of Angate, Anapalam of Dina, Anapurthana, Idean and Pandro. Agaway, Itranera, Medua, Sharp Aha, Focus Daha, Bulagalavia, or a Paranathai, Ungalaki, Edithi Vilaki. Our third solar one hour, Pata de Vita. So, thank you. I'm going to the slide of sending you, sir. I don't know. 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 I do if they kundu, Ungaladam, Kundu was our Kana, Urdunayaha is the Fiji Kum, India of Kum, Hindu in Sarbaga, Nan Nandrigalanda, Anakata Itari with the Kunde, Professor Dr. Ik Marke, Mindu Murmur and Nandri Suli, here in the Minimum, Ungalagada, the final words that you need to tell, you can tell, sir. We will close down. And a big thanks to Dr. Milesam, another, sir, and 
uh, Dr. Uh, Delhi Babu sir for bringing wonderful lineups for this 10 days. It is not a simple task to get you all hooked. Thanks to Corona that uh, we were able to get such an informative. Sila, in the Matha Kundarikum, Asri Riliara, Chernishna Solinga, among YouTube links are put around, Ungloda website to Mamana Rilakana, either Kondova Sikum Bolzadan, either in the in the Info Webinar Series order, Mulu Pai and Adayum. And the Soli, Professor Dr. Pradeep Mazar, last final touching words for our students that you would want to tell. Yeah, yes, actually. Uh, you know, uh, to summarize, uh, you know, uh, it was a, it's a very difficult task. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, one thing of uh, Adi Shankara being asked to summarize Advaita or Gandhiji being asked to summarize a message for uh, children. He said, my life is my message. Take it. It's all one sentence. But, you know, for children like you, I have just one message, you know, stay focused and never give up. Okay, stay focused and never give up. And in 24 hours, just find a little time to meditate. So that will connect you to, you know, whatever uh, bigger force or uh, bigger uh, realities are there in the universe. So you get tuned to that and you will be able to do big things in future. Okay, stay focused and never give up and have a disciplined uh, life and do your duty. That's all the message I have to tell you. And wish you success in all your endeavors. Take care of your loving parents. You know, they have taken care of you. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, sir. Stay focused, stay safe, stay healthy. Nandri, Manakam. Hi, this is T. Chakravarti, father of C. Aditya. C. Aditya joined the Fiji uh, in the 8th standard as a classroom program. Initially, when he started, he was a little bit nervous, I would rather say, because he used to see the students performing very well in the class. Then uh, his teachers over the, in the Fiji encouraged him to learn more and then practice more, by which he can also improve. So that gave him a confidence. And when, when he wrote the uh, Big Bang test in 9th standard, he was able to do well. And then he was able to, from there on, he went one scale up and up and up. And now he is, he is here. And for us uh, achievements, I would like to credit the Fiji for all the encouragement that they have given him and also the guidance which they have provided all along, which helped him to excel in his studies. And also in the pandemic, uh, they helped him not to lose a focus and kept him busy with all the necessary exercises and then practice tests and so on and so forth by which he was able to uh, attend the exams more with more confidence and he had the more rigor and he worked hard for that as well so that he can achieve in his studies thank you